Assalamu alaikum everyone. Duma Mubarak. I guess we can get started. Uh, inshallah, hopefully everybody. Happy that it's Friday, finally. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah, wa nahmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu, wa nasta'afiru, wa na'uzu billah min shuri anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. May yahdihi allahu falamudillala, wa may yuddil falahadiyala. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallahu, wa adahu la sharika la, anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون uh, my dear brothers and sisters, all thanks and praise are due to Allah. We seek his help, we seek his forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whoever Allah leads astray is never going to find guidance. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and his messenger. O oh mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both men and women. And fear Allah through whom you ask one another. Verily, Allah is ever watching over you. O oh, you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will amend for you your deeds, forgive you your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. I'm Abba. My dear brothers and sisters, today we'll continue our journey into the 99 names of Allah. We started this journey some time ago. We're going to continue on to this journey. And if you're keeping track, we're roughly at about 38 right now, uh, the 38 attributes we've covered so far. So today after today, we'll have covered 38 attributes. So today I wanna to talk about the next three names in this series. And today we're gonna to talk about Al-Shakur, Al-Ali, and Al-Kabir. Reminder to myself first and foremost, and then to all of you listening, is that from these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek to follow the path and become closer to Allah. So these attributes are a way for us. They're kind of like a prescription for us so that we can get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least we can find wisdom in it so that we can start building that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first of these names today is Al-Shakur. And the meaning of this name is grateful, the grateful one, the one who multiplies rewards of a few pious deeds. Now the root word of Shakur is Sheen Kaf Ra, which means to praise, to commend, to acknowledge beneficence, and to be thankful. And this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while really easy for us to comprehend, because we understand great gratitude or great being grateful at a very basic level, it has deep implications for us. So when we start unpacking this, what it means to be grateful, specifically what it means for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be grateful, we then start seeing you know, certain other things that you know, may not necessarily come to our minds immediately. So we know how to display gratitude. We recognize the need for it. We understand, for example, when someone does something for us, we shower them with praise. We shower them with appreciation. It could be a small favor, like maybe picking up some groceries from the grocery store, maybe you know, running an errand for us. Uh, or even giving a bowl of sugar to one of our neighbors in case they need it, or even dropping kids off from school, maybe doing the run in the morning, doing the school run in the afternoon, could be any number of reasons. And in return for any of these favors, we typically extend our thanks by praising the person for taking the time out of their busy day, giving their attention to us for one request or maybe multiple requests. And that's most of the time, if not all of the time, it doesn't have any monetary rewards attached to it. So just a gratitude, just a thank you is what we typically extend in, in most of those uh, circumstances. Now, ordinarily that's where the interaction would end until another one of these opportunities come up and, and then we're either engaged in asking a favor or we're engaged in doing the favor. And this back and forth is how we build relationships with one another, with our community members, with our neighbors and so on. Uh, and every interaction we have with Allah's creation is an opportunity for us to perform a good deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least that is how we think about these things as Muslims. Now we do these things, these favors for the sake of Allah and we seek our reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, we don't have to be Muslim to help 
our friend, our neighbor, or anyone else who might need a helping hand. So gratitude can be gained and expressed by anybody, Muslim or non-Muslim. When we express our gratitude, we are being grateful. However, our gratitude is limited to this world alone. And we're unable to reward someone for their kindness in perpetuity. And that type of reward where one's good deed is multiplied repeatedly is only in Allah's domain. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the great and glorious is unrestricted in his ability to multiply the rewards one would receive for the good deeds they perform. In uh, Surah Al-Haqqa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about you know, those whose good deeds will be rewarded on the day of judgment. So in verse 24, Allah says, Kulu washrabu haniyam bima aslaftum fi ilaya al khaliya. Eat and drink joyfully for what you did in the days gone by. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the work of his creation, he subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising his own work because his creations are his work. So if you think about that relationship, you know, that's kind of, you know, we are created by Allah and Allah is, is, is uh, celebrating his work. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us from his bounty, and then we use that bounty to benefit other creations of Allah after keeping what we need for our own sustenance. And then we thank Allah when we give, we allow ourselves the opportunity to be given even more deserving uh, praise, even you know, being extra grateful. And in Surah Taghaboon, verse 17, Allah says, if you lend to Allah a good loan, he will multiply it for you and forgive you. For Allah is most appreciative, most forbearing. So this verse is probably one you've heard in a number of fundraisers. Uh, you know, and goes in in Taqdullaha, Kardan Hasana, Yad Afihu, Lakum, Wayakfir Lakum, Wallahu Shakurun Halim. And this is a pretty popular one that's used often, uh, you know, in our communities for fundraisers. Um, but it's essentially what Allah is saying is that give from, spend from what we have given you. And that's an important aspect of being a Muslim is to, is to build communities, is to help our neighbors, help our friends, help our family members. Even our beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi reminded us to be grateful to one another. In uh, At-Tirmidhi, as narrated by Abu Huraira, there's an authentic hadith that says, the Messenger of Allah said, whoever is not grateful to the people, he is not grateful to Allah. The next attribute I'd like to talk about today is Al-Ali, which means the most high, the highest, the one who has the highest rank above all, the one above whose rank, there is no other rank and every rank is inferior to him. So linguistically, again, the root word for Ali is Alif, Lam, Ya, which means to be elevated, exalted, eminent, and to be above all else, to ascend, to be higher, to surpass. And we find references to Allah's greatness in many places throughout the Quran. And one such verse is in Surah Shura, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْأَلَيُّ الْعَظِيمِ To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, and he is the most high the greatest. As we've been talking about relating ourselves to the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do we relate ourselves to the rank of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So if a king is the highest rank in a country, then we can say that everyone who is a citizen of that country is of lower rank to the king. However, the king is a human and a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the king and everyone below the king is of lower rank. And that is a more obvious explanation of rank and one that is grounded in our ability to perceive things visually. And we understand the concept of a king or a queen or governments with a hierarchical structure. And in terms of visual perception, we think about the universe and all the creation with it as a pyramid. So if I can use that metaphor for, a, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be at the top of that pyramid. Now in terms of intellectual perception, if we think about the rank of our beloved prophet, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. His rank would be higher than ours because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen him as his messenger. And similarly, all the prophets that came before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa would be of a higher rank than us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated their status in this world and the hereafter. 
So while all the prophets were humans like you and I, they were directly guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because we look at all the prophets as equals, they are all higher ranked than us. So on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sort us in ranks based on our deeds. The disbelievers will be in one group and the believers will be in another. And among them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assign them ranks so that each of us is treated in accordance with what we used to do. And this is mentioned to us in Surah Al-Ahqaf, verse 19, when Allah talks about the believers and the disbelievers. Each of the two groups will be ranked according to what they have done, so he may fully reward all, and none will be wrong. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that everyone will be treated fairly, even those who are disbelievers. And by sorting us into ranks according to our deeds, Allah is letting us know that our measure of goodness is by our deeds. And if we believe in the oneness of Allah, and we believe in the day of judgment, then our focus should be on how to earn the pleasure of Allah so that we may be successful on the day of judgment. And we can learn these lessons and commands from the Quran. You know, one example of a command is to establish prayer. Another example is to take care of the orphans in our community. The guidance prescribed to us in the Quran are for us to implement in our personal lives. And these rules have been commanded to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran and the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So the Quran mentioned this as well in Surah Muhammad verse 33. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu atiyu allaha wa atiyu rasula wa la tubtilu amalakum. O believers, obey Allah and obey the messenger and do not let your deeds be in vain. The next attribute of Allah I'd like to discuss today is Al-Kabir, which means the great, the one who is greater than everything that exists, the one who possesses greatness of essence and greatness of existence. Uh, again, talking about this from a linguistic perspective, the root word of Kabir is Kaf, Ba, Ra, which means to be great in rank, nobility, majesty, vast, most knowing, to have rights above all others, and Allah is the creator of the universe and all things that exist within it. So Allah is a knower of the seen and the unseen. And we know this because it's also mentioned in Surah Rad, verse number nine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed before anything else and will continue to exist after everything else no longer exists. So the greatness of Allah is unlike that of humankind. So as people, we attach the quality of greatness to a person only during their lifetime. We usually say a person is great or a person was great. Once someone has passed away, we don't call them great in the present tense anymore. This makes us imperfect in comparison to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without whom no creation can exist. So creation emanates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a, you know, in consequence, greatness also emanates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His creation can only exist for the duration permitted by him. That is greatness amongst us can only exist for the lifetime of, of each one of us. So we cannot say that a person is great before their existence and a person's greatness ceases after they no longer exist. Therefore greatness can only exist for the duration of the existence and Allah's existence is infinite. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest and will continue to exist in greatness beyond our comprehension of space and time. In Surah Zumar, uh, verse 62, we are reminded, Allahu khaliku kulli shayin, wa huwa ala kulli shayin wakil. Allah is the creator of all things, and he is the maintainer of everything. Now, these two words, creator and maintainer, are very interesting words to reflect on. When we think about the world around us, uh, and, and I'll phrase this in terms of business because I think that's something we can, we can relate to. Every business that exists hires people who can create opportunities for the business or help maintain the business's position in the marketplace. Uh, you know, you can think of any number of businesses where, you know, you know who the recognizable people are because they're either in the news or they're, they're elsewhere. And this is how we measure the greatness of an individual in the world. 
When someone can create opportunities in a way that many people are able to benefit, we call that person great. And I'm sure each one of us can think of at least one such person. Similarly, when a person can maintain a business's market dominance, that person is also called great because they are able to multiply their personal impact on the business itself by helping the people within it who are engaged in that business realize their potential. So if these individuals continue to remain a part of the business, the business continues to thrive. The moment they leave, a panic settles in. And this is where the business now needs a suitable replacement. Otherwise, you know, things might not go in the way they might want it to go or expect. And such is not the case with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no replacement for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah creates and maintains all his creations. So unlike a business where there are accountability and control st structures set up in place to ensure that everybody's operating ethically, there's no such need for Allah. Allah doesn't need these kinds of structures because Allah is, is the truth. Allah is representative of everything that is good and celebrated in, in this universe. And this elevates Allah's greatness beyond anything we can accomplish in this world. And Allah alone is truly the most high, all great. My dear respected brothers and sisters, today I touched on three of the beautiful names of Allah. Al-Shakur, Al-Ali, and Al-Kabir. With every one of these names, my dear brothers and sisters, I at least you know, want to try and be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by contemplating about Allah's attributes and applying them, this is one way in which I at least seek to do that. And I hope that uh, today you gained and benefit from some of this information and that if there's any mistakes that I made, you will at least um, point it out to me and let me know. But by seeking the pleasure of Allah, we are always working towards elevating ourselves in this world and the hereafter. And let's remember that this world, like all of Allah's creation, is going to end one day. And we will find ourselves in front of our creator being judged for all of our actions. And on that day, you know, Allah tells us that there will be a horn that will blow. And the angel, uh, if you don't know, is Israfil that's mentioned in, the, um, in, in, in our uh, tradition. So Israfil is waiting there to blow the horn on the day of judgment. And then a second time the horn will be blown and then everybody will rise up, uh, you know, to be judged. And when we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a shakur, you know, it should remind us that gratitude is something we should acknowledge and feel every single day. You know, from the moment we wake up in the morning after a good night rest, you know, we should express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another day of life. Uh, there is an authentic hadith recorded in uh, Sahih Bukhari where it's mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, used to recite the following dua when he used to wake up in the morning. And the dua is, Alhamdulillah, hillazi ahyana, ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nashur. All praise is for Allah who has given us life after causing us to die, that is sleep, and unto him is the resurrection. So if you think about sleep and then waking up, you know, some days we might have no dreams, some days we might have a dream. Uh, but at the end of it, the number of hours that go by, it's almost as we put our head down to sleep and then we wake up and it's almost instant. So this is a reminder for us to say, be thankful for what we have and that the day of judgment, it'll be like you die one day and you wake up and, and there you have it. It's the day of judgment. So it'll be all, almost as if you woke up from a sleep and we should all be grateful to one another and perform good deeds that will elevate us in rank on the day of judgment. And we should all be grateful for the health that we have so that we can find time that we have in this world uh, on productive activities, either benefiting ourselves through acquiring provisions or by benefiting others through our actions. And, and life is an opportunity to remind ourselves that with each passing day, our bodies continue to grow weaker as our minds continue to become wiser. I'm sure many of us have thought about the question, you know, what does it mean to tell our younger self with, you know, or share the wisdom we've learned over the years with our younger selves. So that's the opportunity for us, you know, to share that wisdom with, uh, you know, the generations that are now coming up, share that knowledge with them so that they benefit from our lifetime of learning. And this is how we keep each generation informed about what used to be, how we used to live and how we used to worship and how we used to give thanks. So each passing day should feel like an opportunity to renew our faith 
keep building our personal connection with the Quran and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like any skill we acquire, practice makes it better. The more time we spend on our craft, the better our muscle memory. And by reminding ourselves that our rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only as high as our deeds, we should be motivated to perform even more good deeds and be of even more use to the creations of Allah. And by doing so, we stand to benefit from Allah's mercy. And how we choose to spend our free time reflects what we find important to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orient all of us towards his guidance and his mercy. Inshallah, may Allah keep us guided by allowing us to emulate these attributes in our lives as we are striving to become better versions of ourselves every single day. And my dear brothers and sisters, I hope you found benefit from this discussion. Let us all pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he guides us, guides our hearts towards him. And may we all find inside of our heart the strength to stay firm on the path of Allah. And may Allah forgive all of our shortcomings for he is oft forgiving and most merciful. Oh Allah, when we stray, please forgive us and do not let our hearts deviate after you have guided us and grant us your mercy. You are indeed the giver of all bounties. Oh Allah, bless us with pious spouses and offsprings who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. O oh Allah, please have mercy upon our parents and the believers on the day of judgment. Forgive our sins, absolve us of our misdeeds, and allow us each to die as one of the virtuous. O oh Allah, please guide the Muslim Ummah closer to you and protect us from those who lead us astray intentionally or unintentionally. And please guard our health, the health of those who we love, and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to the members of our community who are in need. Rabbana hablana min azwajina. Rabbanafakfirlanazubanafkafirannasiatinawatawafanamaalabrar, ربنا لا تج ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا ربنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم إن الله يعمر بالأذى والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لا لكم تذكرون فاسكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون آمين. At this time, my dear brothers and sisters, I'd like to conclude this khutbah and to all of you, I wish a blessed Jumaah.